Hey all, stuff suck. It's 6W Heisenberg here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're doing what I'm calling our ratchet ass review because today we're reacting to my homie Karma's new new version of Triggered. And because we've already reacted to it, in fact, you can find the actual official reaction here. I'm going to instead just literally uh, give you the most easy ass reaction I can do. So I'm going to sit in front of you not much edits and just give you my honest thoughts and opinions of the track after hearing the track. So first and foremost, sorry for the lighting and shit as well. And the cars, there's a reason why I record at the times I do. There's a very good reason why. Um, so I do apologize again. But anyways, let's get into the actual review. First and foremost, she gets brownie points for me. Very big brownie points. One thing I tell people all the time, is I tell them, no one knows who you are. I told Karma this too. No one knows who Karma is. No one is going to give a fuck if you go and release a song, change it, make it better. Because you should. this song was really close to being outstanding. You just had a few things to fix. And I'm proud of you for trying to put the effort forth in trying to. Um, I can't take credit for that analogy though, or for that idea. The person, or the person, sorry, because people who like fit that game to me was actually my homie zips which i'll tag them down below for the social medias and mark madison where they explained that that's a very smart idea to do and i've always hold, held that mentality since for artists is if no one knows you you can go fix it and make it better and i use this analogy because some artists have told me like Oh, but it's like going back to an old bitch. Okay, well, let six go and lay some game down on you now, shit, okay? Imagine you are failing a class, and your teacher fucks with you, and you do a test, and you fail that test. But because that teacher fucks with you, they tell you, hey, so-and-so, I am willing to allow you to retake this test because I know you needed to pass this class. Are you going to tell that teacher, nah, teach, my bad, dog. It's like going back to an old bitch. I ain't going to redo this shit. No, you're going to tell your teacher, thank you so much. I'll go do this and I'll make sure I get a passing grade on this test, right? Why don't a lot of you artists take it the same way? You should absolutely be viewing it that way because a lot of times like there's tracks that are fucking out of this world that just needs a few mixing issues or you just add this and this here and you don't do it. And it's just like, why? I don't understand, and I, and that's why I'll give Karma the ultimate respect for doing so because that's that's love. Now let's get into the cover art. I feel like the cover art, which I'll post it right here, probably the only edit you guys will see from me this whole day, is gas. I love how there's blood, there's an orange jumpsuit because the thought behind her original cover art was it was more something personal to her which I understand, but I don't agree with because as a musician, your number one goal should be to get as much fans as possible. And to do so, you have to broaden your appeal to a wider audience. That's why for Eye to Eye, me and Jasmine had extenuous conversations and I told her in the reaction too, was I really thought the cover art should have been something more unique and not basic. I really would have liked the Goofy movie tributes because Eye to Eye is a goofy movie song, and I know that her Eye to Eye is not the same as the original, but it was kind of Kevin Campbell inspired, or partly due to your old boy Six here, because old Six told her that she needs to make more of a Kevin Campbell type song, and that's what she did. That's what Eye to Eye was, and it's ironic that she named it Eye to Eye because Kevin Campbell, one of my most favorite songs from him ever, and one of the most popular goofy movie songs, probably his most f famous song ever outside of Can We Talk was Eye to Eye. Um, but the reason why I kept harping on her to do the Goofy movie thing was because it appeals to a broader audience. Everyone knows who Goofy is. Everyone loves the Goofy movie. It's a classic, iconic movie. For Karma, it's the same thing. Doing something more purse in all of you. And I get it, but you want to appeal to a lot of people so they understand who the fuck so that way they get okay this is who the fuck i'm trying to listen to i like this concept this new concept is really good i love how she's wearing an orange jumpsuit she's taking a mugshot there's blood on her face 
realistics wise, that doesn't make sense though because they would wash your face off because you know, they can smell mugshots. It's highly unlikely that like they're just gonna leave just blood on your face. Like usually, they would have like a forensic person go get. Uh, I forget what those things are called, but but I know we have all like used them in science class. Where they go poop, get the liquid, and then they can put it on somewhere to test it, whatever. Like that's usually what they're going to do. But regardless, it gets the point across that hey triggered and it still feels like you because the person in the photo is definitely you so it's like you get the best of both worlds a lot more people could relate to being pissed off fucking up someone and then being in prison as opposed to some random ass four little connect connect four ass cover art no offense to your old one because it wasn't bad but just broader audience type of thing um the one nitpick and i think this is a me this is an a cover art the one nitpick i have with this new version is what if instead you went like fucking sadistic you acted like you were harley quinn and did a sadistic ass face when doing the cover art that would have been dope as hell but besides that really good i have no issues with it that's an a i i know for a fact i rated the cover art before c so you went up to letter grades w um now let's get into my two main issues with the original track which was a the first and most important one was the vocal vocabulary now i'm going to remind you guys what vocal vocabulary is. vocal vocabulary basically means your pronunciation of words when you're singing rapping whatever when you're laying vocals down on a track vocal vocabulary is so important because it allows us the listeners to understand what the fuck you're saying. If I listen to a, a Furco track right now, I can understand every word he's saying. So we took class on that to make sure it's the best as possible. Right? And that's an issue she's dealt with. But honestly, she's improved each track she's done. Every track she's done, check out 3rd of November to now. It's amazing. And I actually, I'm a man of my word. I'm getting her on more tracks now. It's going to be hard because we talked about it. And it's very hard for her to record at all. But I'm doing my best to get her on tracks. And I got her on a track with my homie Ty, which, if you don't know, he's been promoting the fuck out of that shit. It drops in two days. Go listen to it, because Six is, Six's intuition is unbeatable. I I knew right away she would be perfect. She was my number one choice, and I, and I told her to ask him, get Karma on this, if not Karma, I see, but get Karma on this, and Karma's going to fuck this bitch. And this was, I felt so bad because this was right after we are, we just had the conversation of don't get me on too many track six because I really don't have time. And I said, fuck that shit. I just did it anyways. And she cooked and she had a lot of fun doing it. So I'm glad she did. And I love the verse. Like he was like geeking out talking to me. Um, And then me, her and Barty are working on a track. And what I can tell you is although Barty has only showed me the verse once and he was honestly lit as fuck the time he showed me the verse otherwise he probably would never show me the verse um it sounds yes like i can actually understand a lot more of what she's saying in it if not everything so she's getting better at it um the second thing was her spatial awareness in the track i feel like there was too much open space where she should have had more stuff on the track and she didn't and that was really disappointing so now that you know those two main issues we can now get into the actual critique of this new track itself first and foremost it's ironic because if in an ideal world i would have liked every lyric to be understandable but even Barde, as a great example will have tracks where there would be one word i don't understand and that's fine but the hook to me was already something that was like crystal clear understandable the fact that you were able to make the hook sound more understandable was like it's not a negative it's definitely a positive because you only improve the track but it's like i felt like the verses needed more love the verses is where you needed to fix your vocal vocabulary the most and although i feel like you kind of went back and fixed a little bit, a bit of it i feel like it's lacking there that's just me being honest as possible with you i feel like there is still some parts in your verse and now that there's only one verse which we'll talk about that in a second is just like i feel like you need to go back and fix that now let's talk about the verse so the thing with this first track with me uh, their original was it had a soul to me it had a soul that was lacking in pieces and 
put those two pieces together and then the soul would have been complete. I feel like here, I feel like you are lacking soul of what the original track was supposed to be. Now, again, this is just my opinion. Other people might are might have different opinions, but as someone who loves this track and loves what you did with this track, I feel like why'd you cut it? Did you know back in the day, artists such as Biggie, Tupac, Aaliyah, all of those superstars in the music game understood two very important things. A, time is money. Time is one of the most important things in this world, and they need to use it effectively to grab our attention. If they do, we'll be fans of them for decades to come. We are still playing Biggie's music in the fucking clubs to this day. We are still raving and talking about Tupac's diss tracks and Tupac this and Tupac that, and is Tupac still alive? We need him back making music, right? Like. We still understand that. Right? Those people understood what it meant to completely have a track resonate and capture you in every moment. That's why their track was five minutes long, because even though it seems long for today's standards, every moment of that track actually fucking mattered. I'll use another example, Bone Thugs and Harmony. Their tracks, Bone Thugs and Harmony is like three or four people. So when they do a fucking feature with like Biggie or Tupac, which are, which are two very famous songs, how is five people going to fit on a three-minute track, a two-minute track, along with already the main artist being Tupac or Biggie? So that's in reality like six people on one track. It's not going to happen that way. They had to have longer songs. And they used all of the space effectively. I feel like here, the space was even worse off than the first track because what you did is you just cut the problem. You didn't fix the issue. It's like you almost put a band-aid over it and not truly tackled what was wrong with the track, which is the timing of the track was amazing. I love that it was three minutes long. I wanted more of you on that track. The fact that there's less of you now is upsetting because we need more of you. And regardless of what you think about, you know, someone like Barty having a verse on it or someone else, a feature having a verse on it, it doesn't really matter because I, it just needs a second verse on it in particular. I think, honest to God, the best version of this track has karma on it from hook, verse, the outro. And I think the best format of this track could be hook, verse, Hook, verse, outro. That's how this track should have gone. The fact that it's just hook, verse, ad-libs, outro. No. Like, why? Right? And I had the same conversation with Jasmine and Bardet when it came to But Do You, which was Bardet wanted to cut the track to, like, I don't know, three minutes long, or to, like, two minutes long, because, for like, three minutes was long. And do that he was going to cut in my opinion the best part of the track out of it which was the back and forth um ironically everyone who has reviewed the track since then has told me the back and forth is the best part of that track i wonder why maybe old six knows what the fuck he's talking about every once in a while but you know what i mean is shit like that right like he listened to me, he added in, or he left that shit in, and the overall track was better for it. You can have longer tracks as long as the longer tracks respect our time. And I think Karma could do that. I think Karma could have a three-minute track, and I'll sit and listen to it because it's her. She's that damn amazing at doing the tracks. She just needs to add in more and actually take the time to do it. And the vocal vocabulary is going to come because she's improved each and every time. Like I said, the track her and Karma are her and Kai's on. Vocal vocabulary, A1. The track her and Barty's on, although she's only done one part, she is going in to add in some other stuff because she has some ideas. Let's kiss. Um, love. The vocal vocabulary is 10 times better, so that I'm not worried about that as much anymore, right? I'm just, like, I wish there was more space on this track to completely fill this track up with what it deserves to be. But that's just my opinion. Again, I'm not an artist. I'm not an engineer. It's hard as fuck to make a track, man. That's just my humbling opinion. And I I love her music. She's an amazing person. I consider her a homie. I can't wait to hear more from her. And I think she should do the same shit with 3rd of November. Goes back and redoes it. Make it better. 
And I, like I said, guys, I'm working with her to make sure she gets more drops, and we're doing it at her pace. But more music will drop, and I'm glad she went back and re. Back makes me very happy on some levels, but also like very sad on others. Fix up Heisenberg. Peace. I'll catch you in the next one. Let it ride.